And I thank you so much, Lord God, that I'm called, and the people here are called children of the living God, sons and daughters of God. It's a privilege that only blood-bought, blood-washed Christians can come. And if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, have you have received the infilling of the Spirit of God within you? If your spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit that's within you, that you are indeed a child of God, then your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, and you are on your way to heaven. And don't let any devil on earth or in the skies try to talk you and say anything different, because that's a lie. It's a lie. Luke, in, in chapter 1 of Luke's Gospel, he speaks to a man who calls him noble, most noble Theophilus. He was a gentle, Gentile convert, evidently somebody very important, because Luke addresses him in, in his Gospel, and also in the Book of Acts, which many believe, and I believe that Luke also wrote that, Acts and his last book. And he says, of the other, you've been instructed in the word of God. But now he found it necessary to write it down. You know, there's nothing like a book. You can hear preaching. But if you have the word of God in your hands, you can keep on going over and over and over. You know that repetition, repetition, repetition causes you to know the word of God even better. Each and every time you study that word, you know the first time you read it, they say you might be paying it a couple days later, maybe a couple percent. Now you read it the second time, you read it the third time, you read it the third time, you keep on reading it. Repetition. Amen? That's what God's people need, and that's why it was necessary to put the scriptures in the book. I, don't, I, don't, I, read, I read the word of God on my, on my computer, on my iPad, same thing. It's still a book. But just coming to church, I think I said this last week, and I need to stress it. Just coming to church on a Sunday, or even a Sunday night or a Wednesday, is not enough. It's not enough. You need to keep on filling yourself with the Word of God. Because as we go closer to the end, we are in the end time. As we go closer to the arrival of the Son of Perdition, there will be greater attacks against the church and against God's people. You need to know the word of God. Yeah. So that when the devil speaks to you a lie, you say, devil, you're a liar. Because God said it. Amen. The Bible, the word of God, most of the new Christians, Jesus died, I believe it was 32 AD on the cross. From 32 AD, so the 50s and 60s they do. There was no written word. They only began to be put down and even they weren't distributed. Like we have the Bible today, amen? John in the book of Revelation, that was I think 96 AD, something like one of the later books. But with the book of Revelation, the word of God was complete. From Alpha to Omega, from Genesis to Revelation, God said there is no more new revelations. I mean, although some Christians, people, claim they have another revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a lie. The book was the book, the book was began way back because all the Christians all they had was was the Old Testament. The Pentateuch and and the writings of the uh, you know the prophets and the first king, second king, etc. But the New Testament Christians 
They, they didn't have what we have. We have in our possession the Word of God. And it's probably, I think not probably, it is the most read book on earth or in the world. So many copies are distributed. People read it every day. We need to keep on reading it to be reinforced. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those that come here this morning, Lord God, to receive from you. Yes. First of all, to give unto you what you so desire. To worship and praise. Lord God, and then to receive from you what you have spoken to the minister. The word of God, the manna that you have for each and every one of us today, Father, I pray. Lord God, I know the pastor's got a word. He always has a word. A dynamite word. Sometimes it will lift us up and sometimes we beat us up. That's all right. It's balanced. Sometimes we need to be lifted up and sometimes we need to be correction. But the word of God is always good, no matter what it is. Amen? It's what we need. God gives us what we need. Amen? Amen. 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 What we need. Sometimes there's churches that go out there and tickle you in and tell you, oh, God understands. It's all right if you occasionally sin. God understands. That's a lie. God does understand, but God has made a way for you because he had placed his son, Jesus Christ, at the right hand of God to make intercession for you. That word intercession means to plead your case. The greatest lawyer that ever lived is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's up in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. Yeah. All you have to do when you miss the mark is say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. And he takes your sins and puts them in the sea of forgetfulness. And he said, I'll never remember them. I'll never bring them up again. Amen. Yeah. That's the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. That's good news. Amen. And that's what the gospel is good news. Amen. Amen. You have any other questions? Your product will be open. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to give unto you, Lord God, the yes, word of the gospel, Lord God, for the, for the work of this church, Lord God. Father God, the ties in the offering, Lord God, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, Lord God. Father, give to those who can't give, Lord God. Father God, so we can give the next time, Lord God. Multiply these gifts to be offered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning. Aren't you glad to live in a free country? Yes. Yes, please, God. Tell a song for us this morning. <laughs>
friendship and affection I need Feel my father smiling on me The splendor of the king. 
worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Honor you, praise you. You are the one that makes a way. You are the one that brings light into the darkness. Jesus, we honor you. God, we worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling this place.
seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. scripture where Jesus come across the water and there was a man in the tombs bound by legions of devils. Everybody had given up on him. Expelled him out of the town. Didn't want nothing to do with him. He cried in the night and gashed himself with stones and, and cried out. He was had lost his mind. Because the legions of devils had taken him over. Jesus was on his way. Jesus was crossing over. And this man had no idea what was fixing to take place. When Jesus stepped foot on the ground, the devils that lived inside him immediately recognized this is the Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. This is the one that we need to fear. They didn't fear the townspeople. They didn't fear what was up there in the graveyard. But what they feared was getting off of the ship. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you don't got to fear man. You don't got to fear uh, what's 
what the the spiritual realm as well. The only thing that needs to be afraid is the spirits that are fighting in the battle that you're in. We, the title of my message this morning is counterattack. I believe that the things that are happening in the world right now is waking the church up. So I thank God for those things because we have been on cruise control for so long that we've gotten lazy about what God has called us to do. He has called us to be devil slayers. He's called us to, to cast them out. He's called us to heal the sick. He's called us to raise the dead. Now, that may sound a little crazy to you, but I believe that Jesus Christ said that what I do, you'll do also and greater than these because I go unto the Father. He is seated down at the right hand of God. He has called the body of Christ to, to be His hands and feet, but our hands and feet have not been working in the last several decades. But God is raising up a mighty army once again. He's shaking us loose of our complacency and He's bringing us into a place to where once again we'll be a threat to the devil's kingdom. Yeah! Oh my God! My God wants you and I to do His bidding. I'm so sick of religion. I don't believe in religion, don't like it, don't want to be around it. But I believe in salvation. God has called us and ordained us to be the, the hands and the feet, the ears and the mouth of, for God Almighty Himself. Amen. This is a quote from a John Wayne movie. It's called In Harm's Way. All battles are fought by scared men who would rather be someplace else. I know you don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. But there is a time to fight, church, and that time is now. Our country has went to the dogs, but it's time to kill the dogs. Amen. Come on, church. You and I have the power and the ability because God said greater is He that's inside you than He that's in the world. And I, like the Apostle Paul, when I come to the end of my life, I want to say, I have fought a good fight. I, I have finished my course. I, now there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. I've done everything. And now I'm going to go on to my reward. I'm here to tell you something this morning. If you will hear me. God has called you and ordained you to be warriors in His kingdom. I know it's not pleasant. But I also know it's necessary. This is a quote from G.K. Chesterton. He says... A true soldier fights not because he hates what's in front of him, but because he loves what's behind him. Wow. Everything that our country stands for, liberty and justice, all men and women created equal, and all that stuff has been under fire, it's been under attack. Our Declaration of Independence all the things that our forefathers had fought and shed their blood for, how everybody seems to want to change. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the only change that needs to take place is men and women need to fall on their faces before the Almighty God and repent of their sins and their wicked ways like Penny quoted earlier and start looking to the God that can bring us from where we're at to where we need to be. This country needs God. Start in the church. We can't blame the world. It's time to look inward. It's got to start within us. If we want revival, then we need to get revived. I'm telling you, church, we can't expect somebody with a black satchel to come and bring revival. What we need to do is fall on our faces before Almighty God and say, God, I need you and bring the war to the enemy. Yes, hallelujah. The enemy has been on the offensive for so long. 
And the church has been on the defensive for so long that it's time to, to reverse it. Ever since the Garden of Eden, the enemies attacked, attacked, attacked. I would like to ask you this question. Do you think you'll give up before the end of this thing? The church, the church wants him to give up. He ain't going to do it. And you and I, the church of the living God, need not give up either. Amen. The devil does everything in his power to get you to throw your hands up in there and say, I quit. I don't know how many times people have told me how I wasn't going to come to church today. The devil fought me and fought me. Why do you think he was fighting you? Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why did he want you to go to church? Come on. Some of you that are going to be watching this on YouTube are going to be saying, God, I wish I'd have been there this morning. The worship seemed to be really good. And I'm here to tell you that the devil is trying to isolate you as individuals to try to keep you away from the brothers and sisters that you draw strength from. The body of Christ has been fitly joined together and the devil's done everything he can do is to tear it back apart. But I would like to say to you this morning what Jesus Christ has established will be from now on the gates of hell will not prevail. I know you're just visiting. And I don't mean that crazy. But sometimes I just can't help myself. I appreciate Kelly's kinfolk for being here this morning. They came to the party yesterday and thought we were real nice people. Then we got us. That's okay. We're harmless. We're harmless as dogs. And wise as servants. I have observed for more than four decades of living for Jesus that I have never been able to just have peace in this world. Something is always going on. Something is always happening. That's right. Amen. And you're not going to have peace in this world. You know why? Because the world hates you. That's right. Amen. Jesus said that the world hated him is going to hate us also. That's why we're not going to have peace. You and I just need to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. We need to, to do a counterattack. Instead of tucking our tail between our legs and running off every time the devil roars, we need to run to the roar. Say, stay right there where you're at, Mr. D. I'm on my way. When Jesus crossed the water, the devil was up in the tombs and didn't have a clue what was fixing to happen. And when he stepped out of the boat, the devils looked down there and the man ran to Jesus and fell at his feet. Come on. It's at the feet of Jesus that true victory comes. You know, there's a lot of things that's taking place in this world. And I can tell you this, it's not going to get better. Amen. If it gets better, then Jesus' word's not true. It's not going to get better. Amen. People are going to be crying, peace, peace, and sudden destruction is going to come upon them. That's the word of God. Amen. That's, I can't change that. I can get up here and lie to you and tell you, oh, everything is a bed of roses, and God wants you to be rich. Like a lot of the TV preachers do. Everybody needs to be rich. And if you're not rich, you're doing something wrong. But I'm here to tell you this morning, Jesus said, the poor you'll have with you always. That's right. What does that mean? The reason, I want you to think about this for a minute. Uh, in the terms of warfare, there's the offensive and the defensive. Adolf Hitler, the reason he was so successful in the Second World War is that he was always on the offensive, never on the defensive. He pushed, pushed, pushed. He would conquer one country, he'd move on to the next. He'd enslave them people. I was watching a documentary, and uh, one of the things he's done wrong is 
On D-Day, the, the bunkers and stuff that was manned, he had a lot of the people that he captured manning those places. Well, as soon as the soldiers hit the shore, they either ran, gave up, or turned on the, the enemy, turned on him. You and I need to turn on the enemy. Instead of hiding from him, we need to go on the offensive. We need to start chasing our adversary instead of letting the adversary chase us. Amen. The devil don't play by the rules of engagement. He's, he don't play fair. When you're in a, in a place to where you feel like you got a little bit of breathing room, things that seem to be going okay now, he's going to sneak up and try to give you a sucker punch. I don't know if any of you have ever tried uh, had a bully in your neighborhood. I think every neighborhood has bullies. I had a bully in my neighborhood. Can I tell you the story and make me not feel bad at me, I hope, because I was a kid and didn't have no sense. There was a boy in my neighborhood, and I was scared to death of him. And I'd come home with a bloody nose just about every day. I'd get off the bus, I'd run home, and he'd be chasing me. He caught me, he'd bloody my nose. Scared to death of him. But I was more scared of my dad. My dad told me, he got tired of me coming home with bloody noses. He said, son, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I thought he was going to give me some pity. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> he said, if you go home with a bloody nose one more time and I find out that you didn't beat that boy down, when you get home, he says, I guarantee you, it's going to be a lot worse than what that boy has done for you. And my dad was a mean character. I knew he meant what he said. If he told you something, you could count that it was going to happen. Amen. People used to be men of their words. That's why I wore that wig this morning. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say nothing else like that. You know? But anyways, he was a man of his word. And I was terrified. That day at school, I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing but think about getting beat up by the boy and then getting beat up by dad when I got home. And I thought, what am I going to do? So... I formulated this plan. I'm going to let that boy get off first. And up in Michigan, we got sand spurs. That's where I was raised in Michigan. We had them here, too. And we really had them in Michigan. We lived near the uh, Lake Michigan. And the whole ditch was, was lined with sand spurs. And I was right behind that boy, and I, he was snickering. He knew he had me because I couldn't get away from him. And when he stepped off the last step of the bus, I was on top of his shoulders, and I rode him into the ditch. <laughs> he was covered with sand spurs from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And I didn't get him, I didn't let him turn over. I beat that boy down. I mean, I beat him within an inch of his life until I thought he wouldn't be good enough to chase me, and I jumped up and I ran, ran home. His name was Michael Sisson. I'm going to change his name to Michael Sinner. But Michael Sisson done that to me. Do you know that that boy never tormented me after that? Never. Because I stood up to him. And the devil has absolutely buffaloed the church into yeah. fearing him and thinking that he's the all-powerful office. Well, it's time to pull the curtain back and see that he's just a decrepit thing that God uses once in a while to bring chaos into the world. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you've got power and authority over all the powers of the enemy. That's the word of God. That's not my word. You, you say I. I, I got power. I got power. Over all the power. Over all the power. I'm losing some of you. Of the enemy. Of the enemy. Jesus Christ has given us that power and authority. I got good news for you this morning. God knows the next step that the devil's going to take. And there ain't nothing the devil can do to stop him from having that knowledge. The only hope he's got is getting 
you and I on the defensive. And for the most part, the church has done that for the last 50 years or so. The trouble with the church world is not that our forefathers has made a mistake and got us into this mess that we're in. The trouble with the modern church is they've never had to fight for the precious religious freedoms that our forefathers gave their lives for. <laughs> oh, we say, yeah, we're battling the devil when the car don't start. <laughs> or the boss is mean to us. Or something else goes wrong in our lives. We say it's the devil fault. But we've never yet resisted on the blood. It's time for the church to rise up and stir the gifts up that's inside them and put on the whole armor of God. And get ready for a spiritual battle that's being set before us right now as I speak. There is a spiritual storm coming. That's right. And you and I better be ready. We better be in the right position to fight the good fight of faith. In 2 Timothy 1, 6-14, I'm going to get to some scriptures now. Gus, I'm sorry I forgot about letting you open this morning. You'll just have to bear with me, brother. Wherefore I put unto thee, put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our, our Savior Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know in whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep it by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, though the battle's raging, I know, God, that you've given us the authority, Father, to speak your word and the authority of the Holy Ghost that lives inside us to fight. And I pray in Jesus' name that you'll help us. I would like to read you a scripture in 1 Samuel 14, 6-15. Saul's armies sort of pinned down. There's all kinds of chaos and things going on. And the men, no doubt, are scared to death. And Jonathan, Saul's son, in the sixth verse, says that Jonathan said to a young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that Jehovah will work for us. For there is no restraint to Jehovah to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that's in thine heart, turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over to the men, and we will disclose ourselves unto them. And then, if they say thus to us, tarry, until we come to you, then we will stand still in our, our place and will not go up to them. But if they say thus, 
Come up to us. Then we will go up. For Jehovah hath delivered them into our hand. And this shall be the sign unto us. And both of them disclosed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come out of the holes where they have hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me. For Jehovah hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. <laughs> and Jonathan climbed up on his hands and upon his feet, and his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew them after him. And that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was about 20 men. And then, as it was about a half a further close length of an acre of land. And there was a trembling in the camp. And the field, and among all the people, the garrison of the spoilers, they also trembled. And the earth quaked. So there was a great trembling. Exceeding the great trembling. I want you to notice here, it's got to start somewhere. Why not with us? That's my question for you this morning. Why not with us? If God be for us, who can be against us? God has given us the strength and the ability to conquer. And I'm here to tell you that God is looking to you and I to do His work in these last days. It's time to get up out of the holes and in the places that we've hit ourselves and say, God, I am going to put it to the test. I am going to fight your fight. The righteous God needs a spokesman, a spokeslady to go forward and say, I am going to be the person that God has called to do the task. Jonathan had a great work ahead of him. He's going to face a whole army, him and his armor bearer. There was about 20 that he slew in the first slaughter, but it went on after that. Now listen to me, church. I'm not talking about picking up arms and bearing arms against the United States of America. Now, if somebody cuts up the YouTube video, they can make it sound like I'm against, uh, that I'm for some kind of revolt and rebellion. No. I'm not, I'm not for that. What I'm for is to take the weapons that God has supplied for us because He says the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, they're not guns, and they're, not, they're not knives, and they're not swords, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And it's time that you and I be counted on the side of the righteous. Amen. The devil has done everything he can do to tear us apart. Now it's time for us to come to his shore. Put our foot on his ground. He said, get out, devil, in the name of Jesus. And if there just happened to be a herd of swine nearby, give them their leave. When they start crying out and saying, have you come to torment us before our time? Give them their leave. Like Jesus did. God is looking for a great thing to happen. And the only way that great thing is going to happen is through the church. This war that Jonathan was fighting was a physical battle, but it had spiritual results. The battle that we're engaged in is a spiritual one that has physical results. In other words, when we wage war in the spiritual realm, it will have a profound effect on the things that are happening in the world that we live in. Wow. 
I believe with all my heart that God is going to raise up a mighty army. Maybe not in number, but in His power and His strength. I like 2 Corinthians. I've already quoted some of it. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not current, but mighty through God, that are pulling down the strongholds, casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself in this knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes. We all come back to the music. The devil would like to make the Christian extinct. It's all right to be Muslim. It's all right to be a Hare Krishna. It's all right to be all these other things in our country. But God help us if we call ourselves Christians, the witnesses for Jesus Christ. Because that's what they're waging war against, is Christianity. I understand some idiot governor over in California. Sorry if I call him an idiot. Come on, brother. Said it. He's making it illegal to sing in church. What? Yeah. yeah. He's making it illegal to sing in church. Well, Mr. Governor of California, if you was the governor of the state of Florida, I would tell you to take a hike. And cast that demon out of you. Because God has raised us up to sing praises and glory to Him and to raise our voices into a heavenly anthem for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. With that, I'm finished. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. He's the solid rock of our foundation that cannot be moved. And under His wings is where we abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty God that has brought this country into existence and made it what it is. The devil's trying his best to tear it down. And he's trying his best right now. But it's time that the church of the living God arm themselves with the spiritual weapons and go out to war and fight the battle that God has called us to. He didn't call you to sit on a pew. He called you to go out into the world and to win the world to Jesus Christ. One soul at a time. Give it to Jesus, church. Give yourselves to Jesus set by an idol for so long that we don't know even how to do it anymore. But God is going to show us. He's going to light the way. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for everybody. Set under the sound of my voice this morning. I know, God, that you've got a great work for us to do. God, it's time for us to arm ourselves with your word and your spiritual gifts. Father, to stir up the gifts that lie within us, that we might once again become the flames of fire that the world can see and know that there's a God. I pray, Father, for everybody in this building, that God, that could be that witness that Jesus said we could be. In Jesus' name. Strengthen us and help us. Lead us and guide us. And let the truth of Almighty God only be spoken by us. God, help us not to hide behind the lie, but to come out and share your wonderful, illuminating word, God, with those in the darkness. In Jesus' mighty name.